This is Aaron Douglas. He is a prominent African-American painter, illustrator, and arts educator. He was a fixture in the Harlem Renaissance in New York during the 1920s. His murals, paintings, and illustrations touched on social issues of race and segregation. He also, at the end of his career, founded the art department at Fisk University. With his art, he worked with people such as W.E.B. Du Bois, who was one of the founders of the NAACP. The Harlem Renaissance was an intellectual revival of African-American art in Harlem. For Aaron Douglas, one of the things he wanted to emphasize was that this kind of Egyptian and African-centered style of artwork belonged to the African-Americans that came over originally as slaves. Before this point, a lot of Europeans claimed this style as their own. So in his work, you can see characteristics that remind you of Egyptian figures as well as Egyptian symbols. You can see at the top there, that is very reminiscent of Egyptian style and characteristics. He also tells the story of how the slaves came across through the Middle Passage in a lot of his artwork. Showing figures that are shackled. This one, next one actually shows the boat that's taking them across the Middle Passage. A lot of the movement and lines in the background also are reminiscent of many characteristics of the African American experience, such as hope from the star, lines that radiate to represent either a concentration or even music. So there's a lot of things to see within his figures. This next one I really like because it shows a lot about where they came from and where they're going. So at the top there are three figures that are standing tall pointing to what looks like kind of the future, pointing to this building. There's waves and lightning that could represent their past. The one figure to the left is holding tools and has a globe next to them. These figures represent the future, the advancement, the intellectual revival of the African American people and how they are going to contribute to society and how they will rise. And if you look at the bottom, there are shackled chains to remind us that they came from this. What else do you see in this artwork? What do you think the colors mean? What can some other symbols tell us about what he's trying to say to us? Take a minute to look quietly. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about the human figure. So you should go to the next blank pages in your sketchbook. Um, so a back and a front. So we can write some notes over here and draw something over here. So if this really bothers you, you can go to the next blank pages. So I'm actually, I'm gonna do that. At the top, I want you to write the word figure on the left side. Give it a little frame so that way it's our title. And when we talk about the human figure, we talk about it in terms of proportion. Which means the relative size of things. So for example, if I have a tall pencil and a shorter pencil, you would say, Relatively, this one is smaller than this one, or in proportion, this pencil is smaller than this pencil. Um, in proportion, your hand is smaller than your foot. So when we talk about proportion, we're talking about things, one thing compared to another. The other thing we're gonna write is our artist, Aaron Douglas. And I wanna emphasize that we are doing him because it is February and it is Black History Month and it is important to recognize artists of all races and ethnicities 
and for Black History Month, we are going to be concentrating specifically on African American and Black artists. So Aaron Douglas is our main artist who will inspire our, um, the way we draw our figures and the way we create backgrounds. All right, so on this side, I'm gonna draw a pencil. You should draw a pencil too. We're going to draw the figure. There's a lot of math in this. Um, and before you uh, get worried, don't worry, I will take you through it very slowly. So you have a little square we're gonna use as our measurement unit. I'm outlining mine so you can see it better. But we'll talk about the figure in terms of how big it is in squares. You could also do this in inches if you're at home. Um, but this will help us make sure that the proportion, that the relative size of everything is the correct size. Um, so go ahead and take your square and leave a tiny bit of room at the top of the page. We're gonna make marks for eight different squares. So watch this. We're gonna make a mark here at the top and one at the bottom. There's one whole section move it down, make a mark so that there's two sections, move it down to this line, make a mark, there's one, two, three sections, move it down, make a mark, now there's one, two, three, four sections, move it down, make a mark, so each section is the same height as my square, one, two, three, four, five sections, six, seven, ooh, it's gonna be tight, and eight. Very lightly draw a line through it. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I want you to find the middle mark so you can go one, two, three, four, or go one, two, three, four, and make a line across. So there should be one, two, three, four spaces on both sides of this line. One, two, three, four, count the spaces. All right, so it's important to when we're drawing, make sure you're on the same mark as me. So this is the top, this is the bottom, and that is the middle. In between the top and the first line you drew, I want you to make an oval. That's gonna be our head. So in between the first line, I'll, this should be the measurement of one head. After that, we're gonna put two little marks for the neck. They're not gonna go very far down, just a tiny bit. Almost like a third of the way down to the next mark. And then I want you to find the mark that's above the middle and make a short little line. This is going to be your waistline right here. So from the top, one, two, three. That waistline should be about one and a half of these squares at least. So if you wanna put your square down there, how wide it should be. And then I want you to not draw straight up, but a tiny bit outwards from this waistline. Two lines that kind of go up like this. and then meet it to the neck. So it can go up a little below the neck, come across. Up a little below the neck, come across. Our figure is gonna kind of look like a mannequin in pieces. This will make sure that the, um, the size is correct. 
if you want to measure, it's about two of these wide. All right, the next thing we're gonna do are your hips. So from your waistline, the smallest part of you, you're gonna go out a little bit, but not farther out than your shoulders. Out a little bit like that. And just kind of stop at that middle line. No matter what position figure we're doing, the body will always look like this, this middle part of your body. Now the arms and legs can be doing different things. We're just gonna draw the person standing straight up and down. Um, and I'll show you how they measure. So half of your length are your hips to your feet and your knees are halfway down. So we're gonna draw little circles to show basically joints where your arms and your legs um, meet so that way they can move. So let's make a circle on your shoulder for your shoulder rotator cuff, like that. For your hips, on the edges of your hips, you're gonna make two circles. It's gonna kinda of look like a roller skate right now. And those are your hips. Now, we're also gonna do the knees and the ankles directly below them, but make sure, and not on the middle line, but just directly below. But we're still gonna use this middle line to measure. So from the middle of your body, you're gonna go one, two marks down, and on both sides, make slightly smaller circles for your knees. So it should be one, two circles for your knees. Then at the very bottom, you're gonna put two circles a little bit above the bottom line for your ankles. So in terms of how big your head is, your head's one head tall, your torso is one, two, three, and then your legs are one, two, three, four heads tall. Yes, you can measure yourself in the height of your head. All right, you're not a stick figure, so you need muscle between your two sets of joints. So instead of just drawing a stick, you're gonna draw an oval that touches both of these. Oval. Oval. Doesn't it look like one of those wooden mannequins? And then between these two, oval. Oval, just one oval each. And then at the bottom, you can kind of put triangles, like a short line on the inside and a long line on the outside, like your feet are kind of like in a PA position. All right, so we got one head for your head, one, two, three heads for your torso, one, two, three, four heads for your legs. Let's talk about your arms. And this is when you need your measuring thing again. Your arm is going to be three of our units, um, but your arm bends in the middle. It doesn't bend in two different places. So what I want you to do is use your cube and we're just gonna draw a line first. So we'll draw it three long. So go one, move it down, two, move it down three. See how it kind of ends up right near your hips, but below your middle line. One, two, three. All right, I want you to kind of find the middle of this line by eyeballing it and make a circle. Find the middle, make a circle. It technically is one and a half of your units if you want to use your unit for that. And then, so your, your shoulders move and bend, your elbows move and bend, and so do your wrist. So go ahead and make little tiny circles for your wrist at the bottom. Because, once again, you have muscle, you're not a stick figure, in between these two sets of circles, you'll draw ovals. Oval, skinny oval, skinny oval, 
skinny oval. For your hands, you can kind of draw like half triangles. So no point on them. The point kind of is but would be behind the circle. So it's just to show the volume of your hand, kind of like a mitten. So it's important when we draw the figure that first you measure and then you put the joints. Think, okay, this one's my shoulder, this one's my elbow, this one's my wrist. These are my hips, these are my knees, these are my ankles. If you put those, you go down your body and think about those parts that bend. Um, if you put those in place, you won't end up with extra pieces, which, sense, which sometimes happens. Sometimes someone will do a circle and then all of a sudden there'd be a three ovals and you'd have two elbows, which is kind of weird. So you gotta think of it as each part is going to be, each circle is going to have a name to it, okay? Even on this diagram, you can name them if you would like to, if that helps you. Shoulder, elbow, wrist, hip, knee, ankle. Take a few minutes to adjust these when needed. I want you to leave the lines on because this is a diagram of the human figure. Um, on the other side, or on this side, you can write eight heads tall, because you are a human and you are eight heads tall. And if we have time, you can color in your figure. I like to color the joints a different color than everything else. That way I remember that their purpose is to be exactly where they need to be. So 